Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, as a member of the Select Committee, I would like to acknowledge the, the hard work done by our Chair, uh, my fellow members and the Committee's staff. While committees can quite rightly attempt to hold the UK Government to account, and this report does just that, we have a wider issue. As we have already heard, the Duchy of Lancaster refused to attend. The UK Government's attitude was built to the premise that good enough will do. Attending press conferences and reading out data which, as the report states, is to emphasise an argument, rather than it, as it should be to inform the public, is not good enough. The Chair quoted Disraeli. I shall quote Roger Kipling. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. Too often UK government briefings fail to consider those basics of curiosity. They fail to understand that people would be curious as to why they have been asked to stay at home or wear a mask or not meet friends and family. Maybe the UK government, like Kipling, thought it was prudent to let those serving men rest from nine to five. Well, I don't. With well, the population of the UK faced up to a virus unlike anything we have ever encountered, they deserved better. If the UK government is going to close down businesses, people need explanations. They need to understand the rationale. They need to be shown the figures. The phrase, trust me, I'm a politician, doesn't hold much cachet with the public. And an aversion to the truth and a lack of transparency as displayed by the UK government only adds to people's mistrust. At times of national crisis, we need the people to trust government. Big decisions are made that will come into effect very quickly, and normal levels of scrutiny may not be appropriate in the time allowed. Therefore, it is crucial that the evidence on which decisions, often life-changing decisions, are made is timely, accurate and transparent. There is no place for blind trust in our society. It has to be earned. And throughout the COVID crisis, the UK government has failed to do that. The UK government demanded trust and expected trust, but it failed to earn it. From the dubious contact tendering, as covered by my honourable friend, the member for Midlothian, to the changing the definition of coronavirus deaths to a narrower criteria, the UK government has played fast and loose with data while displaying an arrogant devil may care attitude. This is reflected in the comments of the Good Law Practice, the Good Law Project, sorry, which condemned the UK government as being contemptuous of transparency and allergic to accountability. And as the report highlights, UK ministers have quoted statistics without providing sources and acted in a manner that falls short of the UK Statistics Authority UXA's Code of Practice. The report found that there were not enough explanations of where ministry responsibility for data lay, and it changed several times throughout the pandemic, that UK government delays in sharing data hampered local COVID-19 responses. When the UK government failed to, to be open and transparent, it fed the conspiracy theories, it tested the resolve of responsible citizens, and it undermined the colossal work being undertaken by frontline workers. The Prime Minister's former housemaster once wrote, Boris sometimes seems affronted when criticised for what amounts to a gross failure of responsibility. I think he honestly believes that it is churlish of us not to regard him as an exception, one who should be free of the network of obligation which binds everyone else. Most of us would be affronted by the na naivety of our teenage self but it appears that the Prime Minister has not just embraced these attitudes, he has encouraged those close to him to do the same and rewarded them for their efforts. As we once again attempt to emerge from COVID restrictions, we can't allow the UK government to walk away from this. I shall close with a quote from the conclusions of the report. The ministerial code needs to be strengthened, so it is clear that ministers are required to abide by the OXA Code of Practice in their presentation of data. The OXA Code includes the principles of trustworthiness that builds confidence in the people and organisations that produce statistics and data. 
Abiding by the Officer Code of Practice is a statutory requirement for government departments. It is simply not enough to ask ministers to be mindful of the Officer course. Unfortunately, principles, conventions, expectations are not enough. Ministers can't be held to account by a raised eyebrow or a stern letter. And that, Madam Deputy Speaker, is why it is only right and proper that PACAC holds the inquiry into the propriety of governance in light of doing so. Thank you very much. Listen.